It's the moment that I have waited for all my life. We are crossing, crossing, crossing from the darkness to light. It is you, love, that we came to see here tonight. We are crossing, crossing from the darkness to light. Crossing from the darkness to light. Fire and this moment just consume us whole. So, Father God, we thank you for this day. We thank you for waking us up this morning, oh God. Even as you have brought us through this time, oh God, you brought us through this tough season, oh God. All we can say is thank you, oh God. Lord, you all we can say is thank you, oh God. Our hearts are full of gratitude, oh God. All I can say is thank you, oh God. Lord, you've been so good to me. All I can say is thank you, oh God. Father God, we thank you for this day. We thank you for giving us bridge. Thank you for giving us the opportunity to praise your name and to give you all the glory, oh God. Even as we start this service tonight, oh God, I pray that you come down, oh God. I pray that you fill this room, oh God. I pray that you touch everybody watching, oh God. And I pray that we have a great time and that everything goes the way you want it to go. In your name I pray, amen. Now to begin this party, I'm just gonna get bridge music behind me to start this party. So bridge music, take it away. I found in you, I'll save 
Hallelujah. Come on, somebody, wherever you are, begin to open up your mouth and declare how you love this God. Begin to speak in tongues wherever you are. If you be for us, oh God, and I'm all Sataya Devos, who can be against us? Who can be against us? And I'm all Sataya Devos. Am I all Sataya? And I'm all Sataya. I'm all Sataya. I'm all Sataya.
What's up, Bridge family? It's your girl, Stacey, and I'm here for the challenge corner today. Alex did this challenge a few weeks ago, but it's a totally different one. I'm gonna try and do the emoji quiz. So let's get right into this video. All right, let's get into this video. First word. They changed it. First it was guess the word, now it's guess the country by the emojis. Okay, Ghana should be in here. So you Let's see, go. you see? Bra, Bra Z, Zil. L. Okay. Brazil. What did Braz I say? He said bathing suit, sleeping sick. So mind you. Dicey. on the next one but um clearly this is not for me so thank you so much for watching stay tuned for the upcoming challenges and make sure you drop some comments down below on some of the challenges you'd like to see and you already know we got you stay tuned for the rest of the service and what, what, what did you say again what was the last one and let let's get back to business 
<laughs> oh, let's, let's, I forgot. <laughs> now we're gonna hop into the next segment. Well, hello and welcome, Bridge family. Welcome to another Monday service right here at Bridge Toronto. It is an honor and a pleasure to welcome you to our live. It is indeed a good day. It is indeed a good season. It is indeed a good year to be alive because the Lord has done something amazing for us in this season. I'm pretty sure not... All of us knew how this year was going to end or how this year was going to play out. But God being so good this year, some people have canceled it, but I haven't canceled it. And I hope that you have not canceled it as well because God is about to do something mighty and something great in our lives. And as a church, we are in the month of expansion. And I know, and I know God is going to expand our territories. God is just going to expand us and enlarge us with so many things. And so if you're excited for this, month please just show some excitement in the comment section give a thumbs up give a fire emoji and just show God that we are still waiting on him for the rest of this year amen amen and so once again welcome to our bridge live it is indeed an honor um, I have a word in my spirit um, this evening and I pray and I know that it is going to bless your life and so, Father, Lord, we thank you, O oh Jesus. We thank you for everything that you have done for us. We thank you, O oh Jesus, for all the things you continue to do for us. We give you all the glory. We give you all the honor. Be thou exalted, King of kings. Be thou exalted, Lord of lords. Father, Lord, I humble myself, O oh God, and I ask that you just use me as a mouthpiece to bring your word forth to your people, O oh God. And I pray that this word would change somebody's lives life and I pray that this word would just encourage somebody wherever and whatever state that they're in in Jesus mighty name we pray and say a big shout amen once again in the comment section amen thank you Alex and thank you Zeke for being my audience today amen and so um father we thank you and as the songwriter said you can build your home on our worship and I don't know about you I just have the spirit of worship and I just want to worship God and uh, not a singer but you don't have to be a singer to worship God you don't have to be you know a songwriter to just show God that you just want to worship him and today I just want you to be in the spirit of worship as we dive straight into the word of God and see what God has for us this fine beautiful evening wherever you are and so our anchor scripture for today is Jeremiah 18 verses 1 to 4, Jeremiah 18, 1 to 4, and it says, The Lord gave another message to Jeremiah. He said, Go down to the porter's shop, and I will speak to you there. So I did as he told me, and found the porter working at his wheel. But the jar he was making did not turn out as he had hoped, so he crushed it into a lump of clay again and started over again. Just to summarize it, it says, the Lord God asked Jeremiah to go down to the porter where like they make, you know, pots and plates. Go down there and just watch the porter. The Lord has something to say to him. And as he was watching the porter, the porter was making something, making something out of a clay. So he's molding, he's breaking, he's, you know, you know just pressing down, pressing down, crushing and everything. But as he was making it, Jeremiah realized that the porter seemed like he didn't really like what came out of what he had made. So he crushed it all over again and he did it again. And then the Lord said to him, oh Israel, can I not do to you as this porter has done to his clay? As the clay is the porter's hand, so are you in my hand. If I announce that a certain nation or kingdom is to be uprooted, torn down, and destroyed, but then that nation renounces its evil ways, I will not destroy it as I had planned. And so the Lord God is just telling Jeremiah that he's, he's, he's the porter, right? He's the master. 
of our lives. And if he chooses to, you know, crush some things and press some things down and shake some things away from us, he has the right to do so if we allow him, right? And so the title for my message today, we're debating about it, and I think we have concluded that we have concluded that we will title it the pressing, the pressing, the pressing. And so this is just a story, okay? So I love mangoes, right? And I don't know about anybody that loves mangoes. If you love mangoes, just you know. Let us know in the comment section that you love mangoes. But I love mangoes, and as a kid back home in Ghana, during the mango season, a couple of my friends and I will go around the neighborhood and, you know, look for mangoes on the mango trees because, you know, we grow mangoes in Ghana. So th that season was really exciting. Me and my friends would meet up, and we'd go around the neighborhood, you know, looking for ripe mangoes to pick, and mind you, sometimes we will go into houses and neighborhoods that we are not supposed to pluck the mangoes because we didn't plant it, but we did it regardless. So let's say we're just ripping mangoes illegally, but to us, hey, we love mangoes, so we gotta do what we gotta do. So we will do that, pluck the mangoes and everything. And um, I realized that, as I was thinking about this, I realized that there was three ways to go about getting the mango off the tree. One was to aim at it with a stone and hit the branch which the mango was hanging on and the mango will fall down. Two was to either climb up the tree, right, and reach for the mango at the branch and plug it. The third one was to climb to the middle of the tree and like shake the tree so that all the mangoes would just drop and then, you know, you pick what you want. But I realized that I was more of option three, okay? Because one, I didn't have a good aim. Two, I'm not trying to climb up to that specific branch. What if it breaks off and like I fall down instead of the mango and like, you know, I have like a broken arm, but yet the mango is still hanging up there. So I was not for option two. I was more of option three. I would climb down the mango tree right in the middle and as petite and as tiny as I am, I would shake the mango tree till like all the mangoes would drop. And so with the third option, when I shake, you know, the mango tree with all my strength, with everything within me, shake it, and the mangoes fall down. There was like, you know, all types of mangoes will be falling. So we have the ripe ones that will fall. We have the unripe ones that will fall, and then like the rotten ones that will fall down. But ain't nobody got time to check which mango was which because we were illegally plugging mangoes. So we wait till at the end and then, you know, sort out our mangoes and then choose which one we want and so as I was you know reminded of this childhood memory and stuff and how good it was it brought me to um, this this um, process by which olive oil is made okay and I know most of us use olive oil some of us, we use it for, to cook, to fry our eggs. Some of us, you know, we use the extra virgin because we want to be healthy and stuff. We use extra virgin olive oil. But has anybody ever, like, sat down as you're about to pour the oil into the frying pan and said, like, ooh, I wonder how, like, you know, olive oil is made. Or I wonder, you know, what processes went through for this olive oil to come? Most of us don't, you know, think about that. We don't think about how our food got to where it got to. We don't think of how like hot dog is made. We don't think of how like baking comes about. No, it's just like it's ready made. I want it. Eat it now. Done deal. And so I took time to just study how the olive oil is made. And funny enough, I realized that our lives, my life and your life is a bit relatable to the olive tree or the olive seed. How so? The olive seed. The olive seed has to go through three processes. The shaking, the pressing or the beating, and then the separation. The shaking, the pressing or the beating, and the separation. So just allow me like two minutes to just 
go down the process by which olive oil is made. So one is the shaking. The shaking, as I read, it says that they will use um, rakes or they will shake down the tree and then the olive oil, um, the olive seeds will drop or the fruits will drop to the ground. And then the farmer or whoever has to, you know, separate them from plumness, ripeness, and quality. So they will separate it like that. And then um, two is the pressing. So after they have separated it and chosen which olive, olive trees or seed they want to use, they have to store it for a couple of days or a couple of hours, and then they will rinse it with cold water and then pass it through um, the hammers or the olive crushes, they call it, to crush the seed so that the oil comes out. And one thing I found interesting was that dependent on the, the, dependent on the resilience of the olive oils, the olives um, skin, they might have to pass it through the olive crusher maybe the second time, okay? And then finally, the separation whereby they separate the, you know, expressed oil from the veggie water, vegetable water, because sometimes they come all together. And sometimes, um, most of the time, the the fresh pressed oil is the extra virgin oil. And then the remainder of the paste that's, you know, pressed again is like the regular olive oil. And so you're probably asking, Fastina, how does that have to relate to my life? So let's just go to step one, the shaking. Have you ever been in a situation where you just feel like everything in your life is just, is just shaking? Like things are just disruptions, like left, right, center, especially this year, like Corona just came. I think the beginning of the year when we heard like Kobe and his um, daughter passed away was like a, a shaking to us. And then like we moved on, it's like, oh, coronavirus. And it's like another shaking. Like there's a lot of disruptions and shakings that as a, as a, as a world, as a body of Christ, we've gone through. And so sometimes God, I believe that God will begin to disrupt some things in your life, begin to shake some things of your life. Sometimes it may be relationships, it may be friends, it may be habits, it may be attitudes, you know, jobs, a job that you held so dear to your heart because you worked so hard to get that job. And all of a sudden they fire you for no reason. And you're like, what did I do? Disruptions right there. And so sometimes God will begin to just shake some things off our lives because in our prayer closet somewhere one day, we just went to God and said, God, not your will, but my, not my will, but your will be done in my life. Sometimes we forget the kind of prayers that we pray that like, you know, when we think of our lives, we're not sure where we want to go. We're not sure how to move. So we say, God, not your will, but your will be done in my life. And so God will begin to shake some things of you because you've given him the authority. You've given him the power to shake those things. So God will begin to shake some things off your life so that he can make you to the extra virgin oil that you are. And sometimes it does not make sense. And sometimes we do give the enemy credit for some of the disruptions in our lives. But it is God that is causing all those disruptions for his glory. It is God that is shaking some things off your life so he can, you know, make you and bring out the giftings within you. But before he can do that, some things have to shake off. Some things have to come off your life. Some things just have to come out. And so he will begin to do that. But after he has shaken you, right? After he has shaken you, he would take the things that he shook. Whether it be your bad attitude, whether it be your gift and talents, he will shake it and then he will take it up and then he will press it or beat it or crush it. He will crush it just as the Lord would tell Jeremiah, go down to the porter's house and watch him. And as the porter was making his thing, like, it's like it didn't come out the way he wanted to. And sometimes our lives does not come out the way God has intended. And so he will begin to shake the things and then he will crush those things. He will crush it and he will press it down for his glory, not to, not to harm you, not to destroy you, but to strengthen you because there is a separation he's about to do in your life. And after that separation, he's about to take you to a higher level, but you need to have patience because sometimes the crushing just does not feel right. I mean, like, could you imagine like even the sound of crushing sounds painful, crushing sounds painful and so sometimes God will just crush the things that we hold so dear whether it be that relationship whether it be that dream job whether it be that course that program and you filled it 
crush you and humble you in such a way that you become a new clay, you become flat. And he will not go take some new components. He will use the same things that he made you because he's a good God, he's a perfect God. And when he made you, he made you in his image. So he will take those same things and mold it and crush it for his glory. He will do that. And so, like, when we study the process of the olive oil, it says before the olive oil is crushed, right, it has to be stored for a couple of hours or days, and then it's washed with cold water. And, like, there was such an emphasis on, like, being washed with cold water or cold pressed. So I decided to research why cold water. And it says that for cold water, it produces and maintains the highest quality olive oil. And also known as cold pressed, although... Adding heat to the olive oils allows for more extract of oil, but it destroys the delicate flavors and aromas of the olive oil. And so right now you may be sitting there and you say, God, yeah, I've allowed God to, you know, shake some things off my life. I've allowed God to crush some things off my life. But now God, what? Like, can we just hurry this process up? And I just want to tell you that God wants you to allow him to do what he wants to do with your life. Just as the olive oil. Yeah, the, the person can use heat to get more oil. But when the oil comes out, the quality, the value of that oil is low. You don't want to go through all that shaking and all that pressing just for the quality of your oil to be low. I mean, then what's the point? You might as well just allow God to do what he wants to do with your life. Allow God to crush those things. Allow God to shake those things out of your life. Press it down together and do it for his glory. So when you come out, you come out and when they sell you off to the market, they sell you with the value at which God had intended the first time he created you. So that your quality, the quality of your oil is that which God had intended in the first place. The quality of your oil, the quality of your life is not less. Like, you know, like it's not devalued, but rather it is being used at the value at which God had intended in the first place. And so I'm just here to tell you that just allow God to crush you. It might not feel good, but he will still do it. Do not confine God in a box. God's timing is a different time. God's timing is not our timing. Sometimes five years feels like a day in God's presence because God created time. So he's not confined to time. Your time, God created the time that you follow, but he is the creator. So that time that he has created, that time that you have for your life, that okay, at age 15, this has to happen at age 25 I must be here at age 30 I must be here but then God's saying that do not confine me to that which I created which is time I created time and I knew you before you were formed in your mother's womb I knew that there will be a season where I'm gonna need to crush you I knew that there will be a season where I'm gonna need to shake some things off your life I knew that there will come a season where I God need to separate you from the things that you think you know from the things that you 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 think you need because I God I'm here to just make you and mold you into that which I created you and I intended for your life in the same place. And so it says that sometimes the olive seed has to go through the, the olive crusher a second time because of the resilience of the skin or the maturity of it. Could it be that the process is taking long, long or God is having to put you through crushing again, through pressing again because your maturity level, unfortunately, is not there yet. You're stubborn, you're disobedient, so that disobedience is prolonging your breakthrough. That disobedience is prolonging the flow of your anointing. And so God is like ready to just put you through. God is ready to put you through the next step. But because of your disobedience, because of yourself, you're stopping yourself to, from moving to the next level. And so God has to crush you again, and God has to press you again, and God has to shake some things off your life again. Not because he doesn't want to move you to your next level, but because you you're prolonging it because of your disobedience. Sometimes it's not God, it's you. Sometimes it's not God, it's us. Sometimes it's not your friend, it's you. You're stopping you from moving forward. 
we are stopping ourselves from moving forward. It's not even the enemy. And sometimes we give the enemy so many credits and he will take it. I mean, why not? But sometimes it is you. Is it a habit that's stopping you from your next level? Is it a secret sin that's stopping you from the next level? Is it a relationship that God is asking you to give up that's stopping you from getting to your next level? Is it? Is it? Is it? Is it? Are you prolonging your pressing and your crushing? Are you prolonging your pressing and your crushing? And so the third, the last step, it will be the separation. And it says that they will have to separate the express oil from the paste. They will have to separate the expressed oil from the, from the paste. They will have to separate the expressed oil from the paste. And I believe in this next step, sometimes God has to separate us from the people that we know. God has to separate us from the things that we know. God has to separate us from our weaknesses. God has to separate, separate us so we can be that extra virgin oil. And so that we can be sold at our value. So that we can be sold at our value, extra virgin oil. We, want, we all want the quality oil, not just the, you know, back in Ghana we call it fry tall, right? <laughs> the bootleg kind of oil. If you're going to go through the pressing, you might as well just stick to it. If you're going to say, I'm going to give my life to God, you might as well stick to it. So when you come out, all that suffering, all that pressing and crushing will not be for nothing. Will not be for a, a devalued oil, but rather will be for an extra virgin oil. It will be a quality oil. And God will separate us. And God will tell Abraham to go, like, you know, leave everything that he knows. Leave it. Separate him from the world. And I believe that when God is about to do something mighty in our lives, sometimes he needs to separate us and isolate us from the rest of the crowd. He needs to separate us and isolate us from the rest of the crowd. And so maybe today, tonight you are here and you're like, yeah, Fasina, I get it. Like I've gone through some pressing. I've gone through some shaking. I've gone through some separation. And I'm not sure what the end result is. Can I tell you that the end result is for you to be sought at an extra virgin oil. The person and the crushing, it's not for nothing. It is for so that it is for the glory of God. It is so that your life would just be so sweet and so pleasant unto God that when he looks at you, he is pleased with you. And so sometimes you have to let go of some things. And if you don't let go willingly, sometimes God will force you into the crushing. Sometimes God will force you into the question, and I can relate this so much. There was a season where I, I just knew God, like, I had to let this thing go, but I was like, nah, God, I think we can, you know, we can still have this, and can, we can still do this God thing. And God looked at me and said, you know what, no worries, I will give you time to let those things go. I will give you time to let those things go. And time was running, and time was running, and when the time came, God said, enough is enough. I will take it away. I will crush it. Do you think you know that? I'm about to just turn your world upside down. You think you know that? I'm about to shake your world in such a way that everything that you thought you knew would just be shambles, will be shaped to the ground. Everything that you knew, you thought you had that relationship, well, psych, I'm about to mess it up. You thought that friend was for you? No problem. I'm about to mess that thing up because I am a jealous God. And if anything raises, if anything, if you idolize anything higher and above me, if you worship anything above me, I God, I will take it away because I God, I give it to you in the first place. Could it be that that relationship that God gave you, you began to worship and praise that relationship so much that God had to take it away because he gave it to you in the first place? Could it be that that job, that you, you, be, you got that job and all of a sudden you don't come to church, all of a sudden God does not see you, not even on Sundays. And so God will say, you know what, psych, I will take it away. I will let them fire you in such a way that you will never forget. And it will make no sense. And you know that I got, I did that thing to you. Sometimes it's not the enemy that's doing us. It's not the enemy that's, you know, 
messing things up. Sometimes it is God that is shaking some things around. It is God that is messing some things in your life. And it makes no sense. And you will cry out to God. God, I need you. God, why, why is this happening to me? God, why is Corona just crushing everything? God, why is all these things not making sense? Everything is not working out. God, why is my heaven seems closed? All the doors are closing in on me. And God is saying, because I, God, I'm shaking some things in your life. I'm pressing some things in your life. I'm crushing some things in your life because you need to be crushed. Because you need to be humbled. You need to be placed back to the place where you went to call me. I need you to, I need to take you back to the place of struggle. I need you to take you back to the place of humility. I need to take you back to the place that which you knelt before me and asked me to bless you. But it looks like you're just enjoying the blessings a little bit more. And sometimes we worship the blessings than the one that blessed us. We worship the things, the things that, you know, things of the world. We worship money. We worship music. We worship, you know, girls, boys, you name it. You already know the things that we put before God. And God will come and just disrupt all those things. But God being such a good God, he does not disrupt those things to damage you. He does not disrupt those things to just destroy you. He does it so he can strengthen you. He does it so that he, you can know that, you know, throughout everything, if it has not been for God, if it wasn't for God, I would not be alive today. And you're probably in a situation where you will look back and you say, if it was not for God, I would not be here today. If it was not for God in this season, I should have been dead. In this season, I should have not been alive. In this season, I should not have been able to acquire that job. But it is because of the workings of God. And so tonight, I'm challenging you. Allow God to crush you. Allow God to just press you. Allow God to just shake some things off you. And while he's doing that, just allow it. Allow, allow the process. Allow it to just process. Allow, allow yourself to be processed. Allow yourself to be pressed. Allow yourself to be crushed. Because he's the porter at the end of the day. He's the one that makes us. He will make you and mold you into that which he wanted to you. He will bring out the giftings in you. And if you allow him, he will mold you in such a way that you know that God is God. God has been faithful and God will be faithful. And so, Father, we thank you, O oh Jesus. King of kings, we lift our lives unto you and we say, mold us, break us, O oh Jesus. Father, let's give us, the, give us the strength, oh God, to withstand the breaking, the shaking, and the crushing, and the separation, oh Jesus. Because we know it is you. It is not the enemy disrupting everything around us. It is you, God, because you are restructuring our lives. You are just moving some things around for your glory. So that our lives will be valued. So that we will come out exactly how you intended us and you intended us to be when you first created us and so king of kings we lift you on high lord of lords we give you all the glory we give you all the honor and if you're excited in your spirit as you're about to be crushed or if you're in the crushing season we're all in this together just give a shout unto god let god know that you are ready to be crushed you're ready to be pressed and that he should have his way in our lives in jesus name amen once again thank you so much for tuning in i might have taken just a little bit of your time but forgive me forgive me you know god had to do what he wanted to do and so thank you and before we end it i am not a woman of my own i am under a church under a covering i am under tlc transforming lives and raising leaders and of course i would just like to honor dad thank you for so much and everything that you do for us thank you mom for all that you do and of course thank you prophet you're such a role model unto us and of course thank you pastor robert and pastor Mavis for all that you do thank you pastor dennis michael pastor we love you all and until next time peace love bridge